Welcome to this video on clinical case discussion in ophthalmology. Today we are going to discuss a very interesting case of recurrent corneal erosion. This is a 55 year old female. She presents with right recurrent epithelial erosion of the cornea. She had actually a history of injury with a nail of a child two years back and since then she's complained of multiple episodes of recurrent erosions. Today she presented with watering, redness, blurred vision and she was woken up in the morning with these feelings. And uh, she's a diabetic for the last one year and on examination her visual acuity was counting finger. There was slight congestion of the conjunctiva, there was epiphora and uh, an examination of the cornea in the inferior part of the cornea there was an epithelial defect which had very irregular edges other examinations were within normal limits so we'll go to this is the video of the patient here you can see the patient is obviously very photophobic and this is the area of epithelial defect so this is the area which is being denuded because of this problem so if we take it over here, if I make a line over here, this is the area where the epithelial defect is actually. This is all area and the surrounding area looks hazy. That area is actually the area where you've got the abnormal adhesion of the underlying cornea. So you can see there is abnormal shining. Actually you can go this abnormal area is going right up to there where you see this is actually what you can see but actually when you go and try to debride, debride that area you, the patient was seen and she was diagnosed with right recurrent co corneal epithelial erosion otherwise she was hypermetropic with breast biopia so as before we opted for removal of the loose epithelium with an epithelial rexis on a slit lamp after doing that, we prescribe lubricants such as Tears Natural four times a day, a Vigam Oxide Drops antibiotics, and Tobrex eye ointment to be used regularly. She was told to use the ointment at night time for at least a few months, while the other drops will be used as required. What we so now we'll show you the exciting steps of doing an epithelial rexis you need to reassure the patient that uh, it's a painless procedure you need to put local anesthetic drops you need to identify the area of epithelial defect where we can see over here this is the area of epithelial defect you don't need to put a speculum in you just need to have the patient sitting up on the slit lamp but you need to have somebody hold her head from the back then you use one hand uh, for this eye, I was holding with the right hand, I was holding the laser and with the left hand, I was holding the forceps and I'm holding a plain platform forceps or a tying forceps. With that, you tend to grab hold of the epithelium. You can see the patient is apprehensive because as soon as something comes near her, she the, the near reflex is initiated and she tries to close her lids. She obviously had ciliary congestion, as you can see quite markedly. You tend to identify the loose area, but you tend to go as far as you can. Initially, you think, what will happen if I go too far? It's usually what you need to do is to get hold of that healthy epithelium surrounding the loose epithelium, because if you lose, let some loose epithelium remain there, it is not going to heal properly. So you need to go as far as you can and you can gently use that forceps to go around. And this is an epithelial rexus. You can, you can hold the epithelium and then just keep going around until you get that flap. But the only problem here is it can, it, the epithelium is fragile and doesn't behave as a corneal or a lens, epi, lens capsule. So you can do it uh, anti-clockwise and clockwise as you can get. And it tends to get a bit tricky if you go uh, beneath the lid, but you can hold it down. The other thing, other way you can do it probably is to go in and take the patient to the operating room and you can do it putting a um, speculum 
And once you put the speculum in, you can either use a forceps to easily do the rexes, or the other thing you can use is a wax cell, a dry wax cell, and you can rub that epithelium and it'll just, just come off very easily. But uh, the important thing is to be patient, reassure the patient, and to remove as much of the epithelium as you can. But uh, doing it as an outpatient procedure is uh, very convenient for the patient, so it's it's not, but the only thing you need to have is sterile instruments to do this procedure. So once you've removed that epithelium, you need to do put antibiotic drops and then an antibiotic ointment and you need to pad that eye. The other thing which can be done is to put a bandage contact lens as you would do after a PRK when you've got a large epithelial defect. I need I definitely put a cyclopentolate drop in because the patient is obviously going to be more painful eye after that large epithelium. Let's go through the pathogenesis. So the cause is a faulty loose adherence of epithelium to the underlying stroma following the initial injury. It is the reti pegs the the epithelium does not grab onto the underlying stroma or the Bowman's membrane that can be sheared off upon wakening, especially opening of the eyelids. Typically happens in the morning because when they're asleep in the, by the early morning, the eye tends to be a bit dry and when they're doing REM sleep, the eye tends to move and that tends to uh, scrape off that epithelium off. So the medical treatment we've already discussed, but uh, I'll just go through some other protocols which people do. Is lubrication is first line with preservative free tears and ointment and second line is autologous tears and cyclosporin if you're getting recurrent erosions patching and cycloplegics as we discussed we did that antibiotics and pain relievers topical antibiotics and obviously you need strong painkillers like ibuprofen then inhibitors of metallic matrix metalloproteinases and co topical corticosteroids such as doxycycline 50 milligram bd and topical corticosteroid, methylprednisolone, TID, for three weeks reduces the risk of recurrent corneal erosions. Then we've discussed bandage contact lens. Hydrogel soft contact lens can be left in place for seven days until the epithelium heals. And 75% of the patients treated for three months with an extended wear bandage contact lens remains recurrent free at a year. Topical antibiotics can be used should be used as a prophylactic agent. And punctal occlusion is, can be a very key part to relieve that dry eye which is actually causing the recurrent corneal erosions. Then we go on for the surgical treatment, anterior stromal micropuncture. With anterior stromal micropuncture, you need a 25 gauge needle for which you can produce micropunctures, but they should be one millimeter apart that can be performed at the patient at the slit lamp. So you need to identify that small area where the recurrent erosions happen. Or you can do it with an nd -YAG laser micropuncture using 0.4 millijoules or 0.5 millijoule pulses applied to the region of abnormal Bowman layer through an intact epithelium. Then what we did was epitheliorexis, but it's been described in literature that uh, you can do epithelial debridement with a cellular sponge or a blade and then do a diamond burr polishing of the Bowman's membrane. A bandage contact lens is then inserted for four to five days. But now another treatment which is in vogue with 75% success is you can do, after removal of the central epithelium, can do an eczema laser to ablate the cornea uniformly, creating an ablation depth about five to six microns. So obviously, if it's not correctly treated, the complications which can happen are corneal haze and scarring. You can get infectious keratitis, particularly in the setting of prolonged use of bandage contact lens and topical steroids. And obviously, you can get a permanently decreased vision. So this is a very small and short, interesting case, and uh, which you come by not very frequently, but if you have, if you are able to do an epitheliorexis, that is a very good, uh, Pro, that is a very good choice of treatment for the patient and gives very good relief. I've got very good results with this. But obviously, 
if the patient is getting recurrent ovarians, I think PTK is the procedure of choice which would be done. Thank you very much for watching and please subscribe to our channel to keep up with the latest videos.